Hi, it's your old friend Steve again at the Life and Sad Ending channel, and today we're going to look at the life story and career of Bobby Darren. Bobby Darren was born Walden Robert Casado on May 14, 1936 in New York City to Nina Casado, who had become pregnant with him in the summer of 1935 when she was 17. Nina and her mother Polly decided to pass her baby off as Nina's younger brother. So Bobby was raised by his grandmother, believing that his mother was his sister. His mother Nina didn't tell Bobby the truth until he was 32 years old in 1968 when Bobby was considering getting into politics. Bobby was devastated, but nevertheless Nina refused to reveal the identity of his biological father and took that secret to her grave when she died in 1983. By the time he was a teenager, Darren could play several instruments including piano, drums, harmonica, and guitar. Bobby attended and graduated from the Bronx High School of Science. Darren began his career as a songwriter, writing songs for other artists such as Connie Francis, who he fell in love with. Connie's father didn't approve and wouldn't let Darren near her. Connie has stated several times that not marrying Bobby was one of the biggest mistakes she ever made in her life. Bobby took the name of Darren when he began to record, adapting it from the first name of actor Darren McGavin. He released his first single, Splish Splash, in 1958. The song was a worldwide hit, reaching number one on the Billboard charts. Darren went on to release a string of successful singles, including Dream Lover, Mac the Knife, Beyond the Sea, Artificial Flowers, and If I Were a Carpenter. You know, Bluetooth speakers and soundbars are great for watching TV, but when you really want to get that old time experience of listening to two channel stereo, you need two channel stereo gear. That's why I'm going to recommend the website Crutchfield. Crutchfield is a great website to pick out any of your electronics, stereo gear or televisions. And also they have 60 day returns and rewards points. I have a referral link in the description down below. You will get bonus points and I will too. They're not sponsoring this video. It's just a referral. So thanks for using the referral code. Darren was very versatile, recording in many styles, including country and folk. In addition to his music career, Darren was also a successful actor. He appeared in over 20 films, including Come September in 1961, Pressure Point in 1962, and Captain Newman, M.D. in 1963. He won a Golden Globe Award for Best New Star of the Year. Darren was also a successful television personality. He was a frequent guest on shows such as The Ed Sullivan Show and The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. Bobby had poor health throughout his life. He was frail as an infant and later suffered from rheumatic fever that left him with a seriously weakened heart. Bobby had heart surgery in 1971 to have two artificial valves implanted. During the last few years of his life, he was often given oxygen during and after his performances. Bobby was married twice first to actress Sandra Dee in 1960, and they had a son named Dodd Mitchell Darren. Dee and Darren divorced in 1967. Darren married his second wife, Andrea Yeager, in 1973. They divorced in October of 73 after only four months. Bobby was a social activist and philanthropist. He was a vocal supporter of civil rights and environmental causes. Darren traveled with Robert F. Kennedy and worked on the politician's 1968 presidential campaign. He was with Kennedy the day he traveled to Los Angeles on June 4, 1968 for the California primary and was at the Ambassador Hotel later that night. My original video was banned because of a certain term used in relation to Bobby Kennedy. So that's why you'll see this the way it is. I don't know why it was banned, but... Uh, I, have, I had to adjust it to accommodate their rules. That event, combined with learning about his true parentage, had a deep effect on Darren, who spent most of the next year living in seclusion in a trailer near Big Sur. Returning to Los Angeles in 1969, Darren started his own record label, Direction Records, putting out folk and protest music. In 1973, he started his own television variety show on NBC called The Bobby Darren Show, which ran for 13 episodes. Late in 1973, after failing to take antibiotics to protect his heart before a dental visit, Darren developed sepsis, an overwhelming systemic infection which further weakened his body 
and affected one of his heart valves. On December 11th, he checked himself into Cedars of Lebanon Hospital in Los Angeles for another round of open heart surgery to repair the two artificial valves he had received in January of 1971. On the evening of December 19th, a four-person surgical team worked for over six hours to repair his damaged heart. Sadly, shortly after the surgery ended in the early morning hours of December 20th, 1973, Darren died in the recovery room without ever regaining consciousness. He was only 37 years old. Darren's body was donated to science for medical research as per his wishes. His remains were transferred to the UCLA Medical Center shortly after his death. Bobby Darren was a talented and versatile performer and won over fans with his wit, charm, and talent. Darren's legacy continues to inspire and entertain people around the world. He was posthumously inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1990. Look out, old back. What was your favorite Bobby Darren song? Leave it in the comments below. I read every comment, and I'll see you again next time, unless I come to my own sad ending.